pretty much almost all the way there tonight because I've got 175 miles to go. Uh, that's like three hours and some change if you've got a 65 mile an hour truck. So, I'm sorry if the uh, phone keeps doing its thing there on the mount. This thing is not exactly the best.
your compass in the field.
they got their first with the same crooks He dealt with just last night The only thing that they believed is honor among thieves He found a lot of partners on the scene The choir's mouth were open wide And the old eco blood shot out of four stone That bootlegger came He sat there on the morning space That you born and baby made him think He knew he had a lot, he must confess He knew enough to write a book With every name of every crook So he exposed the whole rotten mess Now he's got his conscience clear Still don't know the name of fear No true friends are few and far between He ain't proud of what he had to do He's heard the words that sound the truth there How to get that bootlegger king That bootlegger king's fingers flash with diamonds And the lawman never knew quite where to win But they knew it for the truth For a load of hundred he would flash his old world and a 38 And that's the ballad of the bootlegger king
time ago I was sipping on some coffee. It's the smoke on Just checked out on my first run. Found eight wheelers ain't all fun. Highways that I never rode. Diesel smoke on Danger Road. Got my schedule by my side, and my throttle's open wide. Feeling nervous, heavy load. Diesel smoke on Danger Road. Just this morning, Papa said. Get your eye out of that bed. You ain't a man until you know. Diesel smoke on danger road. Through the pass and down the grave. He should see the time I've made. But there's dangers yet untold. Diesel smoke. On Danger Road Jackknifed out on 44 That was when I learned the score Can't use brakes on ice and snow Diesel smoke On Danger Road Railroad crossing farther on Found out that my brakes were gone Gunder as the whistle blow Diesel smoke On danger road If the smoke don't hit the fan Now I might live to be a man Just two miles till I'm low Diesel smoke on Danger
hard to take your eyes off and quit playing. <clears throat> I don't get a chance much to play anything anymore, but when I do, that is definitely uh, a game that I would uh, go back to anytime. But, uh, yeah, so. stop here in a little while pretty soon. I want to push my luck trying to find some place to stop but we are gonna go on for probably another hour probably for about 50 miles 48 miles uh, just so that way I can be sure that tomorrow I will definitely have plenty of time and it won't affect my time too much to go pick up the next load so on and so forth. Um, today we got a little bit of a late start, probably a little later than I wanted to, but uh, I didn't sleep all that well last night, so I just said screw it. I'm gonna have to uh, get this little extra bit of shut eye while I can, and then uh, I think we left the truck stop by about nine. Another thing uh, for you guys out here, don't be afraid to stop and help people when you see them, you know, whether it be another driver or somebody who's been in an accident or something. I was going down 20 in uh, just past York, Alabama. There was a, uh, a woman with her kids down out there in the median, and the median looked pretty much right about like it does right here. See how the fence is on the other side. They had uh, rolled their SUV with a U-Haul trailer uh, out into the median. And I, I'm surprised that that SUV wasn't messed up more than it was. It was, you know, for an SUV to roll like the way it did, that thing held up pretty darn good, let me tell you. Uh, it looks like the only thing they needed was two tires and they would be good to go. But, you know, still, I flipped the whole vehicle and everything. But um, I stopped to go out there and make sure they was all right. Because, you know, you see, you see a woman out there standing there with her kids and everything. I guess the father ain't in the picture because he wasn't there. And, uh, you know, just make sure that the kids need, didn't need water or something while they were standing out there. Because it was kind of a warm day and they were kind of dressed a little bit warm for uh, the weather. But, uh, yeah, it, it's something that uh, definitely more of us could do is stop and help people when we see them. Uh, for the most part, if it doesn't look like it's too serious, I'll just pass it by. But, you know, still... Now, I, I mean, it, I was a volunteer firefighter. I didn't really get a lot of medical training, but I got a little bit. I mean, I know how to do some basic stuff, like checking for broke bones and doing CPR. Just making sure that people are all right in general. Um, but, you know, you don't have to be trained to go and help somebody. You know, you can be the average Joe and go out and be like, you know, hey, you all right? Do you need help? Do you need the ambulance, police, wrecker, whatever? Um, the lady I was speaking to was so shook up. She didn't know what exit she was at or where, where she had passed. There was no mile marker for a while. And because, uh, I, I mean, it's like you see out here, there's barely any mile markers. Um, you might pass one every once in a while. About it. Once you're out of town, there's nothing. I mean, there's a mom walker coming up right now, but uh, she was far past the last one that we had passed. But uh, yeah, you know, it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt to uh, just make sure that people are all right. That's all I'm trying to say. They didn't cost you anything except for a little bit of your time. But uh, it, either way, I mean, I remember one time I was uh, pulling past this. It, it was about the area of uh, Vaughn, Mississippi, which by the
the way, if you guys don't know, is a famous uh, site for a wreck, a train wreck, that happened back in the late 1800s or early 1900s, I forget which, but it's somewhere around that time zone. Um, it was a uh, wreck of Casey Jones, Vaughn, Mississippi. Uh, there's nothing there in, Ma in Vaughn anymore, but uh, there used to be a couple, there used to be like two buildings and a train station. But um, nowadays, just, the train station has been moved somewhere else a long time ago. Uh, the only two buildings in the what you might call a town are pretty much being eaten up by the woods and dilapidated and so on and so forth. And they did have a memorial marker out there from what I understand, but people kept stealing it so they just quit replacing it. But uh, apparently they put the first uh, memorial marker for Casey Jones train wreck out there back in like the 20s. I think it was like 1920, 1921, something like that. But um, yeah, that that's a uh, famous area. But I remember I was pulling past on the east side, the eastbound side. Now on the westbound side, there was a guy who had his car on fire. So I radioed up ahead to the people going westbound, hey, there's a car on fire on the shoulder. And uh, people stopped traffic coming uh, westbound. I went over there to check him out, make sure he was alright. But uh, there's nothing we could do with the car because, I mean, the engine compartment was on fire, but I got him away from the fire just in case, you know, something went off in the car. I mean, really, you never know what's going to happen with a car when it's on fire. Um, for the most part, they don't explode like they do in the movies. They just burn. And that is because uh, we have self uh, I believe they have uh, self-sealing fuel tanks, which has like a uh, rubber bladder on the inside of... It's, a, it's like a rubber ba uh, bladder on the inside of the fuel tank. And... As it loses fuel, it's, it continually closes or, you know, it, it contracts because it's already expanded from the fuel. Well, as, it, as the engine takes fuel away, it contracts to keep there from being any kind of, um, what do you say, uh, like f uh, vapor or fumes. I don't know if that's completely true, but I know they had them on... Um, Hellcat fighters, F6F Hellcat fighter planes back in World War II, and I think they transferred that technology all the way over into uh, vehicles in the modern day sense. Um, that's one reason why back in the day Japanese Zeros were famous for burning down, you know, with just a few tracer rounds through them, they'd catch on fire and burn up and explode or something like that. But, um, that mixed with the high octane fuel they used, but the uh, American F6F Hellcats, I think, had a uh, rubber fuel bladder that would close up to keep any fumes from lighting, so you didn't have quite as much of an issue with that as you did with like a Zero, a Japanese Zero, or A6M, what do you want to call it? <clears throat> but, um, little bit of knowledge uh some stuff that i learned a long time ago and just never forgot i'm full of all kind of information man the bayou monroe louisiana uh, the light's starting to die off i still only got one headlight so once it gets dark i pretty much have to stop because you know one headlight not enough and this other one just keeps going out I don't know what to do with it uh, and like I said before it's not as simple as just changing out the bulb on this truck because 
this headlight and hopefully get it fixed. I was thinking about seeing if I could stop at a Love's tonight and use one of their shops or maybe going to TA and looking for a shop. Alrighty, well you heard it. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this short.